So today we are going to be looking at Exodus chapter 27, chapter 28, and 29. Dedication of the priest to the Lord's service. We are going to look at 27 today. He's talking about what is needed for the burnt offering. You know, the children of Israel came from Egypt, and the Lord wants to set a pattern for them on how to go to worship Him, how we are to obey Him, how we are to love Him, so that His wrath will not come upon. He actually wants to show us love on how to live a holy life unto Him. And by human strength, it wasn't possible for them to live. That's why the most precious blood, the blood of Jesus Christ was shed to redeem us and to redeem them. So the blood of Jesus Christ is very, very efficacious. When you see what they were doing in the Old Testament, oh, as I read it, I say, wow, this is cumbersome. But because of the blood of Jesus, brothers and sisters, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus has availed so much for us. Without the blood, we would have been lost. We're going to look at Exodus 27 from verses 1. Plan for the altar of burnt offering. He said, using Acadia wood, everything that was going to be used for God has to be patterned and has to be the best. That means we cannot give God haphazard thing, either our time, our life, our resources. You cannot give God a leftover. Acadia wood is a very strong wood. It's like iron wood in part of Nigeria, in Africa. This iron wood is very strong. Once it's dry, you cannot cut it. So it's used for roofing. For making building. So God is expecting us to give him the best. He says, using Acadia will construct a square altar, seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet long, and four and a half feet height. Make a horns for each of its four corners, so that the horns and altar are one piece. Overlay the altar with bronze. Make ash bucket, shovel, basin, meat fort, meat fox, and fire pan, all of bronze. Make a bronze granite for it and attach four bronze ring to it four corner. Install the granite halfway down the side of the altar under the ledge for carrying the altar. Make poles from Arcadia wood and overlay them with bronze. Insert the pole through the rings on two sides of the altar. The altar must be hollow, made from planks. Build it as just, just as you were shown on the mountain. You see, the Lord is telling them, remember Uzziah, the man that tried to help God. <clears throat> Uzziah was not following the principle, the principle laid down. And for that reason, Uzziah died. God is telling them they have to carry this altar. If they have to move from place to place, they have to put two poles and they have to go through it. And they have to carry it on their shoulder. They cannot carry it with bare hand or bare foot. Everything that was shown here, everything that is built on here is as was shown to him on the mount. That is to Moses. I will do what God asks us to do. Are we shining as light? Are we afraid of darkness? As I said always, darkness is nothing but darkness. And the person that controls darkness is Satan. Darkness does not actually have power over you unless you don't know your right as a light. Take a little light in the middle of the night. Point it to darkness. I have a very small touch light. When you point it, even the night when it's dark, you can see small light is very powerful. And each of us are created in God's light, in his own image. And our duty and our responsibility is to shine. When you shine in darkness, darkness cannot comprehend you. But as a human being, you are afraid of dark. Dark is nothing but just darkness. And when you give your life to Christ and you you live according to the pattern of the Bible, holy light, a dedicated light, obedient light, this life is temporary. This life is temporary. Every week people call me, Oh, Pastor, do you hear this person is dead? That person is dead. I say, that's all right. That's what life is going to be. We live the life, but it's not if we die, but it's how we live. 
That's the most important thing. <clears throat> so don't be afraid of death. Death is, is home going if you know Christ. But if you don't know Christ, then you'll be afraid of death. It's the same thing with darkness. Darkness is nothing but darkness. But if you are a light, darkness will despair. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. So you look at Exodus 27 verse 9. Then make the courtyard for the tabernacle enclosed with the curtains made of fine woven linen on the south side. Made the curtain 150 feet long. They will be held up by 20 posts set securely on the 20 bronze bases. Hang the curtain with silver hooks and rings. Make the curtain the same on the north side. 150 of curtain held up by 20 posts set securely on bronze bases. Hang up the curtain with silver hooks and rings. The curtain on the west side of the courtyard will be 75 feet long, supported by 10 posts, set into 10 bases. The east end of the courtyard, the front, will also be 75 feet long. The courtyard entrance will be on the east end, flanked by two curtains. The curtain on the right side will be 22 and a half feet long, supported by three Post set into three bases. The cutting on the east on the left side will also be 22 and a half feet long, supported by three posts set into three bases. You see, this is very interesting. It's giving them a precise of what they have to do. That's what obedient is. Well, we would I say, why 22 and a half feet? We can just make it 23 feet or 22 feet or 20 feet. Obedience brings blessing. When God said 22 and a half, He didn't say 23 and a half, He didn't say 21 and a half, He didn't say 20 and a half, He said 22 and a half. 22 and a half is 22 and a half. For the entrance to the courtyard, make a curtain that is 30 feet long. Make it from fine woven linen, not just any linen, but the best of the best. Decorate it with beautiful embroidery in purple, in in blue, in purple. And scarlet thread, supported with four posts, each securely set in its own base. All the posts around the courtyard must have silver rings and hooks and bronze bases. So the entire courtyard will be 150 feet and 75 feet wide, with cutting walls, seven and a half feet high, made from fine woven linen. The bases for the post will be made of bronze. All the articles used in the ritual of the tabernacle, including all the ten pegs used to support the tabernacle and the courtyard contents, must be made of bronze. So God is telling them, this is how I want you to do it. You don't just do it for your own imagination. You know, so some people today say, just worship God anyhow. I say, no, that's not true. You cannot just worship God anyhow. He said, as long as you worship Him. There's a precise way. He said, you must worship God in holiness and purity of heart. You cannot have a dirty hand, a dirty hand, a heart, and come to worship God. God does not accept such a thing. We want to worship God. We must worship God according to the preset method. Jesus Christ died on the cross. Grace, that's fine. We are living under grace. But at the same time, the grace is not cheap. As I always say, freedom is not free. Because you enjoy freedom doesn't mean it is free. Somebody is paying for it. And somebody has paid with his life for us to have this freedom, the grace in Christ Jesus. Are you taking the grace of God for granted? Do not play with fire because fire is very dangerous. A small little spark of fire can kindle a great destruction. We see what is going on in California right now. Little fire causing a havoc, destroying the whole city and buildings and people's life and property. So fire is very dangerous. So when we are serving God, we have to serve Him according to the precept. You know, fire is very good. Without fire or without light, life will not be bearable. The, the, the fire keeps us warm. The fire makes us to be alive. The fire makes us to be able to cook food. The fire gives us energy. The fire enables us to travel to far places. We call it controlled fire. You know, without fire, the engine will not move. The car you drive will not move. 
It's a control for the aeroplane, the ship, a lot of things. In your house, your AC that is moving, that is working, is fire. It's control fire. Your cooker is control fire. There are a lot of fire in your house, but they are called control fire. They are very powerful. Without this fire, we will not be there. And even the love we share to each other is fire. The fire of love. When it glow, when it burn, it radiate, it brings peace and joy. So fire is very, very important. But do not take the fire and the grace of God for granted. If you do that, you are playing with fire. And fire is very deadly and it's very dangerous. So we have to make sure we serve God according to the precise pattern. What are the patterns? We must live a holy life. We cannot live a life of sin, a life of debauchery, a life of cheating, a life of lie, a life of stealing, a life of cheating, a life of adultery, fornication, evil thing. We can't do that. We cannot do that because this world is not our home. We are only a temporary resident in this world. Our permanent home is heaven. But for us to live in that heaven, we have to prepare ourselves today. Like a student in the college or in the school. That student has to prepare for the life he's going to live after the college. The college is not the end. It's the beginning towards the end of living a happy life. But if you're in the college, you waste your time. It's only a short period. Maybe four years, two and a half years, three years, five years, six years. 10 years is a very short period compared to the life you are going to live after college. That's how it is with this world. When we are serving God, it's only a preparation for the life we are going to live tomorrow. So we have to serve God according to the precept. Why is God telling us to use the best of the best here? Find woven linen because he wants us to give him the best. The best of our lives. The best of our resources. The best of our energy. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Verse 28 Command the people of Israel to bring you pure, pure on the line, oil of pressed olives for the light, to keep the lamp burning continually. The lampstand will stand in the tabernacle, in front of the inner curtain that shade the ark of the covenant. Aaron and his son must keep the lamp, the lamps burning in the Lord's presence all night. This is a permanent law. For the people of Israel, and it must be observed from generation to generation. You know, today Jesus is the light of the world. He that is in Christ Jesus cannot dwell in darkness. That little light in you, that little light in me, I'm going to let it shine. This little light in me, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Brother, that little light in us, the life of Jesus Christ in us, is a little light, but it's a very powerful light. We have to let it shine. So this light has to shine perpetually throughout the whole night. That means darkness cannot overcome the presence of God. And you are that light in your place of work, in your school, in your offices, in the street, in the marketplace. You are that light. Are you shining for Jesus? Brothers and sisters, when did you shine last? I sent somebody some article. Uh, it was an article. Here is a lady. She's a nurse in, in London. So somebody has been admitted. They had to ask you, are you a Christian? Are you this religion? What about religion? Then when the, the person was facing cancer, he was afraid. He said, don't be afraid. Just believe in Jesus. He's able to, he's able to heal you. And the person requested for the Bible. The woman bought the Bible with our money and was given. The lady was fired for imposing religion on her. Maybe her boss is not a Christian. It's, 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 it's dark. It's darkness. But darkness cannot quench the light of God. The woman was fired. The woman had been a very nice note. You know, the lady said, I don't have, my critical skill was not in question. My religious belief is what it was in question. So he took the case to the court and to the nursing bureau and the nursing board. They said, well, you know what happened? Go back and get your job back. You have not committed any crime. But because of fear, you're well, if I talk, somebody might fire me. If you do the right thing, you fight. I always say there's a time to fight. When you're fighting for justice, when you're fighting for the truth, he said, to be actually frank, medicine is holistic. 
It's not just ordinary medicine. He said the peace of mind is the best thing that can cure you. You can give somebody medicine and the person is anxious. He said, but when you calm the person and let you know God is with him. You know, because of fear, we are afraid to tell our business partner about Christ, our friends, our, our friends in the marketplace, in the school, in wherever we go, we are afraid. Brothers and sisters, the light in you is bigger than any light in the world, and nothing can quench it. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Chapter 28, Clothing for the Priest, Exodus 28. For those of us just joining, Exodus 28. Call for your, bro- call for your brother Aaron and his sons, Nandem Abihu, Eleazar, and Atama. Set them apart from the rest of the people of Israel, so that they may minister to me and be my priest. God call every one of us apart. I don't care whatever skill you have, what is your training, what is your education achievement, what is your marketplace career, skill, occupation. You are called to be set apart for God. You have to be that light. People must see you and say, wow, I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus. If that is missing in your life, brothers and sisters, you need to wake up. And is the light in you dimming? Is the light shining? It's supposed to shine perpetually. The light is not supposed to dim from generation to generation. The earth light is supposed to shine. When that light is shining, I assure you, the angel of God is in attention for you. Anybody want to fight against you, it's only fighting against the maker of the light. Because you are the little light that represents God. That little light, you represent God. And the God you represent will never fail you. When I go to somewhere, people are talking to me. I always say, them, listen, I am a man of God. I represent Christ. I'm Christ's representative. Well, you say, I don't care. That means you want to fight against God. You can never win. So when you, when you are the part of God, nobody can defeat you. They may try. They may seem they are winning. When that lady was fired, for two years she didn't have a job. But she fought and she won. When she made the YouTube video, say, I lost my job because I gave Bible to somebody in the hospital. Oh, the whole world came around and said, oh no, that persecution, it cannot be. And the nursing board and the people that fired, I said, okay, okay, we have to revise this thing. Because the nursing board will say, if you find the, clinic, the clinical skill is what they are looking at, not what else you are doing. Wherever you are, be the best in your occupation. So that nobody will, if somebody had to question you, dot all your I, cross all your teeth, and put all the comma and the full stop or the period where they need to be. So that way, if anybody needs to question you, they will find you to be the best. That's what I say as I, as I tell students, I say, if you're a student, sit down, study your book before the class. When you go there, when somebody is talking, raise your head high. Say, yeah, I'm here. When somebody says, you don't know what you're doing, say, excuse me, check my paper. I'm going to make somebody else to mark my paper. And I will take this paper to the highest level. Because you know the light in you is shining brightly. Make sacred garments for Aaron that are glorious and beautiful. I love that. Instruct all the skilled craftsmen whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. Have them make garments for Aaron that will distinguish him as a priest set apart for my service. These are the garments they are to make a chest piece, an effort, a robe, a pattern tunic, a turban, and a sash. They are to make this sacred garment for your brother Aaron and his sons to wear when they serve me as a priest. So give them fine linen cloth, gold thread, and purple, blue, blue and purple and scarlet thread. You see, when you go to a church, you don't just wear trash. I see some people say, oh, I don't care. They are going to a church, they wear trash. When you appear before the presence of the Almighty God, when you want to serve Him, brothers and sisters, we call it Sunday best. Put on your best clothes. You are going to worship your Father gloriously. Ride your beautiful car. Wear your nice paws. Wear your nice clothes. Oh, somebody say, you guys look so rich. Of course I'm rich because 
My father is the one who owned everything. He gave it to me to enjoy to serve him. That's what God is looking for. Don't go to a church and wear tattered clothes. You look like a homeless person. <coughs> he said, give Aaron the best and have favor with wisdom. Do you have any skill? It's not by your ability. If you serve God faithfully, I say it to ch- children, serve God faithfully, put God first. You see what God is going to do in your life. I don't care what you do. Use that talent, the skill, to glorify God. You see this, uh, Arisa Franklin? They said this lady started singing in the church with the father. The father was a pastor. She started singing. Some 70 years ago, as a little girl, by the time she was 16, she was already making a beautiful record. Because she gave herself to the Lord. They said when she opened her mouth, oh my God, he said, this girl is beautiful, in and out, because the Spirit of God is radiating through her. I don't care whether, whatever you want to be. Make sure you are filled with the Spirit of God. That lady today is more richer than any person you can name. When she, when she died a few days ago, the whole world were in awe. And they give glory to God for a life well lived. When you serve God with your life, I don't care what you do. Even if nobody recognizes you in this world, your Father in heaven will recognize you. And when you want to come home, there will be jubilation in heaven. There will be rejoicing. God wants us to give Him the best. He said, define the effort. The craftsman must make the effort of fine woven linen and skillfully embroider it with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. It will consist of two pieces of front and back joined at the shoulder with two shoulder pieces. The decorative sashes will be made of the same material, fine woven linen embroidered with gold and with blue, purple and scarlet thread. You see, that's what I always say, tell women, I say, a woman should dress very beautifully. Don't wear, don't wear fake clothes. You see, blue, purple, scarlet thread, gold, when you wear them, it distinguishes you from the public. Somebody see you and say, wow, look at that lady, very beautiful. You are reflecting the glory of God. It's not that, it's not pride. Somebody can say, oh, this guy is very proud. Well, that's fine. Oh, you want to tell me you are rich. I'm rich in Christ. Yes, I am. Don't be ashamed. Don't, don't, don't try to be ashamed of your, of your blessing. God give it to you. Enjoy it. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Take two old stones and engrave on them the names of the tribe of Israel. Six name will be on each stone. Arrange on the order of the birth of the original sons of Israel. Engrave this name on the two stones in the same way a jeweler engraved a seal. Then mount the stone in setting of gold filigree. Fasten the two stones on the shoulder piece of the effort as a reminder that Aaron represents the people of Israel. Aaron will carry these names in his shoulder as a constant reminder wherever he goes before the Lord. Make the setting of gold filigree. Then brought two cords of pure gold and attached them to the filigree setting on the shoulder of the effort. You know, as a pastor, every time I pray for all the, all the partners that join, I say, God, all the brothers and sisters that have taken their time to join us during the Bible study this week, Father, bless them. As they go to work, be their God, protect them, deliver them from accident, from sickness, from disease. I have the responsibility to pray for you. You don't have to tell me to pray for you. That is my responsibility as a pastor. I pray for you every day. You don't have to say, oh, you don't have to pray for me. And I'm not even going to let you know I'm praying for you. I say, God, these people are your people. They want to hear your voice. They want to do your will. Bless them as you go to work today. Prosper them. Anybody want to fight against them because they belong to you, you fight for them. So you see God blessing you, you may not know why. Because somebody is praying for you. Aaron has to represent 
The children of Israel before God, it has to carry all the whole body. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm. Verse 15 of 28. Then, with great skill and care, make a chess piece to be worn for seeking a decision from God. From seeking a decision from God. Make it to match the effort. Using finely woven lily and broad with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Make the chest piece of a single, make the chest piece of a single piece of cloth folded to form a porch nine, nine inch square. You see here, when I look at this and say mathematics is required here to do work of God here. Make four rows of gemstones on it. The first row will contain a red chameleon, a pale green parrot, and an emerald. The second row will contain a turquoise, a blue lapis lazuli, and a white moose stone. The third row will contain an orange of jesset, an agate, and a pure amethyst. A fourth row will contain a blue green pear, an oars, and a green jasper. All these stones will be set in gold filigree. Each stone will represent one of the twelve sons of Israel, and the name of that tribe will be engraved on it like a seal. To attach the chest piece to the effort, make broaded cord of pure gold thread. Then make two gold rings and attach them to the top corner of the chest piece. Tie the two gold cord to the two rings on the chest piece. Tie the other ends of the cord to the gold ring on the shoulder piece of the effort. Then make the two more gold rings and attach them to the inside to the inside edges of the chest piece next to the effort and make two more gold rings and attach them to the front of the effort below the shoulder piece just above the knot where the decorative sashes is fastened to the effort then attach the bottom attach the bottom rings of the chest piece to the rings on the effort with blue cords this will hold the chest piece securely to the effort above the decorative searches. In this way, Aaron will carry the names of the tribe of Israel on the sacred chest piece, on the sacred chest piece over the head. When he goes into the holy place, this will be a continual reminder that he represents the people when he enters before the Lord. Inside the urine and turin into the secret chest piece so that they will be carried over Aaron's head, over Aaron's heart when he goes into the Lord's presence. In this way, Aaron will always carry over his heart the object used to determine the Lord's will for his people whenever he goes in before the Lord. You see, as a, as a pastor, a priest, you have the responsibility to know. What is the will of God? And today the will of God is in the, in the Bible and the Holy Spirit. That is why I want us to study the Bible. You, you see, Umri and Tumri, Umri and Tumri was what they used to determine. He said, when you go there, when you wear it, the color change. If you ask God for something, say the color will change or it will display some image. You have to be able to understand what is communicated to you. The Holy Spirit also talked to us today. When they on carry, he said, shall we go to the battlefield? If it's blue or red, you know, okay, the Lord wants us to go to the battle, we're going to win. That's why David was always say, bring me the Umri and Tumri to make sure before I go and fight, should I go? He said, well, let us tell me from the Lord. He said, yes, go or don't go. So when the Lord said they should go, they are going to be sure of victory. When the Lord said they should not go, the same thing today, whatever we are doing, we must seek the Lord's will. We cannot just do our own will. Anything you want to do, pray, say, God, is this your will? If you, if you want to spend money, we may say, it's my money. Well, I always say, we don't have the money. The money belongs to God because our life belongs to God. It's our life we spend to earn that money. So everything we do, we should be for the pure intention of pleasing the Lord. 
May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Verse 31. Make the robe that is worn with the effort from a single piece of blue cloth with an opening for Aaron's head in the middle of it. Reinforce the opening with a woven collar so that it will not tear. Make pomegranate out of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and attach them to the hem of the robe with gold bellies between them. The gold bellies, the gold bells, and pomegranate are to be are to are to alternate all around the hem. Aaron will wear this robe whenever he ministers before the Lord, and the bear will tingle as he go in and out of the Lord's presence in the holy place. If he wear it, he will not die. You see that that bear, when the priests go into the holies of holy, they put a very strong rope on his waist. If they hear that bell is no more ringing, you know he's dead. They had to draw him out for burial. They cannot go there. If somebody go there, they had to wait under one year through fasting and prayer to know who is the next priest that will go and minister to God. A lot of priests go in there, they never come out alive. So when priests go there, remember the, 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 the father of uh, John the Baptist? He was ministering. All of a sudden he came and he couldn't speak. And when he was there, he immediately was born in the east to the Lord. Gabriel came and said, Hey, Zachariah, your prayer has been heard. He said, No, 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 I'm not interested. That's okay, I'm not here for my prayer. I'm here to pray for the people. He said, I know, but your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, is going to have a baby. He said, No, 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 God, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. He said, I'm already old. <clears throat> the time of prayer has already passed. I'm not praying for myself right now. He said, Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm from the Almighty God, Gabriel. I stand before God. He said, I should give you this message. He said, no, no, I know, but I'm not interested. He was trying to talk to him. He was still arguing with him. He said, well, you don't want to hear? You're going to be dumb. Because you're going to talk away your blessing. You know, some people say, oh, yeah, he does already say, he doesn't think can be done. Does already say, nothing can be done. Nothing can be done. Really? Is it doctor God? Well, you don't understand. Doctor have already said it. But this man was talking. He said, well, you're going to talk away your blessing. That's why sometimes you have to be very careful who you tell about your problem. They may compound it for you. Everybody that comes to church, I'm sorry to say, a non-Christian. If you are a Christian, would have a wonderful church on, he- on earth as heaven. But it's not. So that's why you have to be very careful who you share your problem with. If somebody does, cannot agree with you, you share with them, they may turn it against you. You have to be very careful. You can only, the, the person has to have the same faith with you. You have to agree with you. Both of you have to be on the same side. Because the Bible says, he two of us are agreed with anything touching our Father. Who is going to do our Father in heaven? <clears throat> so, John the Baptist was born, and the man was able to speak. So, when the priest go there, verse 36, make a medallion of pure gold and engrave it with a seal with these words, holy to the Lord. The priest had to be holy. Attach the medallion with a blue cord to the front of the Aaron's turban, where it must remain. Aaron must wear on it. Aaron must wear it on his forehead, so he may he may he may make he may take on himself any gift of the people of Israel when they concentrate their sacred offerings. He must always wear it on his forehead, so the Lord will accept the people. You know, Jesus Christ put a crown on his head. The crown he put there was the blood that came out. He carried our sin on his forehead. He died for us. He shed his blood. Aaron was to carry that image to make sure he represented the people's sin before the Almighty God. Wear Aaron's pattern tunic from fine linen cloth. Fashion the turban from this fine, this linen as well. And make, also make his sachets and decorate it with a colorful embroidery. You see embroidery, when you, when you embroider cloth, you make it look more beautiful. For Aaron's son, make tunic, sachets, and special turban covering that are glorious and beautiful. Clothe your brother Aaron and his sons with this garment, and then <clears throat> anoint and ordain them. Concentrate them so that they can serve as my priest. Concentrate and anoint. You cannot just jump into God's business. I was anointed by so many men of God. I also anoint other people today. The same anointing that Jesus Christ received. The anointing is still gone. But you can be anointed in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
If you're not anointed by a human being, the Holy Spirit can anoint you. So don't limit yourself. Say, when well, nobody anoint me. You have to be anointed and be concentrated. You have to concentrate yourself, your life to serve the Lord. That means you cannot do a lot of things that people are doing. They want to go to a nightclub, they want to drink, they want to smoke, they want to have extra or premarital affair. You can't do that. You say, oh, no, I cannot because I am concentrated and dedicated to God. So you have to be a special vessel. Also make leaning on that garment for them to be oneness to their bodies, reaching from their hips to their thigh. This must be worn whenever Aaron and his son enter the, to- the tabernacle or approach the altar in the holy place to perform their priestly duties. Then they will not incur guilt and die. This is a permanent law for Aaron and all the descendants after him. So when the priest wants to serve the law, he has to make sure he put on the best of the best clothes. He has to be clean. Even the pant he's wearing under cannot be a dirty pant. He has to make sure he wears the best. So may God put in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. So when we are going to serve the Lord, it's a serious business. You cannot just come to God, cash your affair. You just come from your, your dirty clothes and just stagger into the service of God. You can't do that. You have to give God the best. Put, give, clean your body. Give yourself, bait yourself. And get yourself ready to serve the Lord. When you do that, brothers and sisters, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord cares so much about us. He wants us to be happy. He wants us not to be sick. He wants us to live a holy life. He wants us to live a dedicated life. That is why he's telling us all these things. Chapter 29, dedication of the priest. After all this has been done now, the priest has to be dedicated for the service of the Lord. They call it the day of ordination or the day of anointing or the, the ceremony and this ceremony is going to last for seven days it's not a special it's not a casual business to be called a pastor a priest is a special that's why i tell us all the time when i say it i don't know if you can understand me pastor needs encouragement because they are carrying the body a true pastor that's the one i share this pastor say they have thirty thousand churches forty thousand. i ask myself how did they do it because you're supposed to carry all the body of these people you're supposed to pray for them, you're supposed to counsel them, you're supposed to annoy them. But what most churches are doing, they, they control their counseling to a third party, and the third party is taking money from them. A pastor has to carry all the burden of the church, all the bodies of the members, and the members also make, also make sure they support him. But today, it's very sad that a lot of pastors are abusing that privilege. They, some of them are doing it very genuinely, but other people, they, are, they, they just want a big number, to raise the, the money, and that is it. But this money does, I don't know what to say. They don't understand it, the, the, the God's business. They don't understand it. And we have to be very careful that we're not in particulars of another mass iniquity. Chapter 29, dedication of the priest to the Lord. Now, this is the ceremony you must follow when you concentrate Aaron and his son to serve me as a priest. The pastor is not serving somebody else but God. A pastor is serving the Lord. Take a young bull and two rams with no defect, the best of the best. Then use using choice wheat flour and no yeast. Make loaf of bread, tin cake, mix with olive oil, and wafer spread with oil. Place them, place them all in a single basket and present them as the, at the entrance. Of the tabernacle along with John Bull and two rams. Present Aaron and his son at the entrance of the tabernacle and wash them with water. Dress Aaron in his priestly garment, the tunic, the rope wore with the effort and effort itself. You see that if you look at the priest, you can go to Google, look at the priestly garment. If we are doing our shade to us, if you see the priestly garment, it's very beautiful, it's like a bulletproof. It's in the front there. You have these different stones. They represent different tribes, the sons of uh, uh, Israel. And in the center, there is a special stone. It's Tumri, it's Urim, Urim and Tumri. That is what you have to wear. And there's a turban, like this African type of, African type of hair, hairstyle, that turban. So you, you wear it, and there's something that is written there, holy to the Lord. And when you enter before the Lord, 
everything he does now, he has to be holy. If he's not holy, he's going to die. So today, as a Christian, we enter into holies of holy because it was broken when Jesus died on the cross. The, the holies of holy was turned into two. But because of the blood of Jesus, we are living under grace. We are living under grace. As I always say, the grace should not be taken for granted. We cannot say, well, brother, I'm living under grace. As some pastors say, once you are saved, you are saved forever. No, Ezekiel say, if a righteous man turns to wickedness, his righteousness will be forgotten. If a wicked man turns from evil to righteousness, all his evil deeds will be forgotten. So it's two way. So you cannot say, I'm a Christian, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. Nobody can tell me what to do. We're living under grace. You, you smoke, you drink, you take alcohol. Although we may say alcohol is number because in Germany, they, they, they take alcohol. In Europe, in Holland, and part of Germany, and part of Italy, people have sex. They, they, they don't have to be married to, to have sex. In Sweden, they, 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 men and women live together. They don't, they don't even get married. We may say, well, I don't do this, but we have to be very careful. We're not influencing the world standard. It's not influencing us. Because God has a standard. We cannot just do whatever the world is doing. There's a, way, there's a cloth he wants us to wear. There's a way he wants this cloth to be made. There's a pattern. He said, he, this thing must be followed. We cannot say whether people are doing it. Are these people going to hellfire? You know, when I used to teach on the school, people ask me a question. I say, Pastor, let me ask you a question. What are all those billions of people who don't, who don't know Christ? I said, that's why Jesus said, on this gospel is paid. What of people are in India, people are in Saudi Arabia, people are in this place who, who don't know Christ? Say, it's not that they don't want to know, but they refuse to know. They have the choice. So God does not want anybody to go to hellfire. But because these people want to go to hellfire, he says, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. We cannot continue in sin. We must repent daily. You know, we are human beings, but our ability, God sees our heart. He knows what we want to do. If our heart is right with God, it's our heart that God look at. That is where all the decision is made, either to please the Lord or to displease Him. He goes about in Jesus' name. Present Aaron and his son at the entrance of the tabernacle and wash them with water. Dress them in the priestly garment, tunic, and the and the robe, and the robe worn with the effort, the effort itself, and the and the chest pin. Then wrap the decorative statues of the effort around him. That's around Aaron. Place the turban on his head and fasten the sacred medallion to the turban. Then anoint him by pouring the anointing oil over his head. Next, present his sons and dress them in their tunic. Wrap the sashes around the waist of Aaron and his son. Put their special head covering on them. Then the right to the priest will be theirs by law forever. And in this way, you will also ordain Aaron and his son. Bring, bring uh, the young bull to the entrance of the tabernacle, where Aaron and his sons will lay their hands on his head. Then slaughter the bull in the Lord's presence at the entrance of the tabernacle. Put some of the blood on the horns of the altar with your finger and pour out the rest at the base of the altar. Take all the fat around the internal organ, the long loop of the liver, and the two kidney, and the fat around them, and burn it all on the altar. Then take the rest of the bull, including its hinds, meat, and dung, and burn it outside the camp. As a sin offering. You know, when Aaron and his son put their hand there, they were confessing their own sin. Say, God, if we have sinned against you, that is dedication now. They have first of all to confess their own sin before they can confess the sin. Because you cannot pray for somebody else if you yourself are not holy. That's why whenever I pray, say, God, anyway, we have sinned against you, forgive us. And we therefore pray for this person. Verse 16. Next, Aaron and his son must lay their hand on the head of one of the ram. Then slaughter the ram and spatter its blood against all the sides of the altar. Cut the ram into pieces. Wash off the internal organs and the legs. Set them alongside the head and the other pieces of the body. Then burn the entire animal on the altar. This is burnt offering to the Lord. It is a pleasing aroma, 
a special gift presented to the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In those days, when we were in, when when I was when I was young as as in the something, when we get offering in the church, we counted the whole offering. We take ten percent of the tithe and offering. The church will give that ten percent also to that ministry work or that thing. That ten percent belongs to the Lord. Then the other one uh, is not used for the church business. I don't know if all the churches are doing today. That's why those are we use it for the mission work for that thing. So. This, this aroma, this uh, animal they brought, one of them, they, 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 they had to burn it completely. It's to the Lord. They don't take anything out of it. Now, let, let's just watch it. The second one, uh, Aaron and his son are going to eat it. And they're also going to pray for the people. So it's a lot of sacrifice. Verse 19. This is what Jesus did for us. Jesus paid all this price with his own blood. It was a lot of suffering, a lot of agony, a lot of shedding of blood for Jesus Christ to save us. Now take the other ram and have Aaron and his son lay their hands on its head, then slaughter it and apply some of its blood to the right lobes of the Aaron and his son. Also put it on the tomb, on the tombs of their right hands and the big toes of their right feet. Splatter the rest of the blood against its side of the altar. Then take some of the blood from the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his sons and on their garment. In this way, they and their garment will be set apart as holy. They are dedicated to God now. They are set apart as holy. Since this is the ram for the ordination of Aaron and his son, take the fat of the ram, including the fat of the broad tail, the fat around the eternal organs, the long rope of the liver and the two kidney and the fat around them, along with the right tie. Take them one around loaf of bread, one thin um, cake mix with olive oil, and one wafer from the basket of the bread without yeast that was placed in the Lord's presence. Put all this in the hands of Aaron and his son to be lifted up as a special offering to the Lord. Afterwards, take the various bread from their hands and burn them on the altar along with the burnt offering. It is a pleasing aroma to the Lord, a special gift for him. Then take the, the, breast, the breast of Aaron's ordination ram and lift it up to the Lord's presence as a special offering to him. Then keep it as your own portion. So now, the Lord, when you are working for God, God does not just want you to say, oh, you just, just finished, as a pastor, you finished preaching, God bless you, go home, bye-bye. No, no, how are you going to take care of your family? So now, it's not saying, this is going to be for your own portion. This is for the person that is doing the ministration. You take this one. There's a part that has to be given to the Lord. That part, now, when it's removed, the other part, after you, you start, it's taken as a will offering. So that's why, when you get your money, either your pay, your salary, you, you take the 10% away where you're tight, whatever you do, you say, God, I want to bless you for the whole money I have received. I bring it to you as an offering. You give it to me, I'm giving it back to you. As I give this money to you, bless the money. Then you can then give it to any ministry you desire and use the other one that remains. It's yours to, to eat. And some of that money, you can spend it as you will. Verse 27, set aside the portion of the ordination ram that belonged to Aaron and his son. This includes the breast and the tie that were lifted up before the Lord as a special offering. In the future, whenever the people of Israel lift up a peace offering, a portion of it must be set aside for Aaron and his descendants. This is their permanent right and it's a secret offering from the Israelites to the Lord. So when they bring this offering to the Lord, they have to take a part and give it to the priest. The same thing today, when they bring the whole money to the church, the pastor is not supposed to take the whole money. There's supposed to be a portion, part of this money that you pay the pastor, either a salary or as a remuneration or whatever. Say, pastor, this is your money for feeding or for this thing. You can be the house for the pastor or do something. But the remaining money has to be used for God's work. Aaron's sacred garment must be, must be preserved for his descendants who succeed him. And will wear them when, whenever they, they are anointed and when, whenever they are anointed and ordained. The descendant who succeeded him as high priest will wear this robe 
for seven days as he ministered in the tabernacle and the holy place. You see, the priest, when he, the priest is leaving the pastor, the garment that he has is not supposed to take them. It belongs to the next pastor if it's actually ordained. Of course, most of the Catholic church, they do that. <clears throat> take the ram used in the ordination ceremony and boil it. Boil it meat in a sacred place. Then Aaron and his son will eat this meat. Remember, you're going to see later on what happened to Aaron. Not, uh, not Aaron. What happened to uh, uh, the, the sons of uh, the, this, this, uh, the, the, the priest that disobeyed the Lord? What is uh, the, the name? Uh, Eli. The Eli. So they're supposed to boil the meat. And when they boil it, there's supposed to be a portion that belongs to this thing. But the priest was dipping hand into the offering before it was presented to the Lord. And that would make the Lord to be angry. That's what pastors there are dipping hand into the church offering. They're not supposed to do that one. Because the money belongs to God. Even though God does not come down to take the money today or they don't burn the money, but that money still belongs to God. It has to be used for God's business and for God's purpose. He said they had to they, they, they boil the meat and eat it along with the bread in the basket. At the tabernacle entrance, they have to eat the offering in the church. That's what they were saying. They may they alone may eat the meat and bread used for their purification in the ordination ceremony. No one else may eat it. That's a special holy offering. Only the pastor and his family may eat from that one. For these things are set apart and holy. If any of the ordination meat or bread remains until the morning, it must be burnt. It may not be eaten, for it is holy. So because it belongs to God, you when you eat it, you cannot finish it, you burn it as offering to the Lord. This is how you will ordain Aaron and his son to their office, just as I have commanded you. The ordination ceremony will go on for seven days. Each day, you must sacrifice a young bull as a sin offering to purify them. Make them right with the Lord. Afterward, cleanse the altar by purifying it. Make it holy by anointing it with oil. Purify the altar and concentrate it every day for seven days. After that, the altar will be absolutely holy. Whatever touches it will be holy. Remember when Jesus said, you make the word of God of none effect in Matthew. You know, the, the, the son said, oh, Raka, father, Raka, mother, what I'm supposed to give to you, I present it to the Lord. They said, oh, that person is free. But the Bible says, he that says, Raka to the father must be put to death. Because your father is the one that gave you life and your mother. But now, you made the law of God of non effect by contravening this law. He said, we cannot do that one. These are the sacrifices you are to offer regularly on the altar. Each day, offer two bulls, offer, offer two lambs that are a year old, one in the morning and the other in the evening. One of them. Offer two quarts of choice flour mixed with one quart of pure oil of pressed olives. Also, offer the quart of wine as liquid offering. Offer the lamb in the evening along with the same offering of flour, wine as in the morning. It will be a pleasing aroma, a special gift presented to the Lord. These burnt offerings are to be made each day from generation to generation. Offer them in the Lord's presence at the tabernacle entrance. There I will meet with you and speak with you. I will meet the people of Israel there in the place made holy by my glorious presence. Yes, I will concentrate the tabernacle and the altar. I will concentrate Aaron and his son to serve as a priest. Then I will live among the people of Israel and be their God. And they will know that I am the Lord their God. I am the one who brought them out of the land of Egypt, so that I could live among them. I am the Lord their God. The God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. God is telling them, do all these things. If you do it, I will live with you. Today, we thank God that we don't have to do any of those things. It is very, very interesting that we're no more doing these things. When I look at it, I say, wow. Do you know how it would have cost for you to buy gold, for you to buy ram, for you to buy this, for you to buy that? But we don't have to buy any of those things. You know why? Because of Jesus Christ. But because Jesus Christ died for us, doesn't mean it is free. There are still obligations we have to do. Today we have the obligation to preach, to evangelize, to pray for the world, to, to tell others about Christ, to shine in darkness. 
wherever there is darkness, we should not allow darkness to comprehend us. We are carrying the gospel because we are holy to the Lord. Anybody that wants to fight against us because we belong to Christ, just tell them, I'm a Christian. I belong to Jesus Christ. If they say, oh, I don't care. Unmuted. If they say, I don't care, then leave the person. They will see the wrath of God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Brothers and sisters, as I say every week, we are taking the Bible chapter by chapter, by the Bible. I want us to understand the mind of God, to know where we are, who we are, that we are special people of God, and God has called us as His own. He delivered us from sin into His marvelous life. What a wonderful time to serve the Lord. What a wonderful time for us to give a heart to God. I don't know what to say. Serving the Lord is very joyful. When I read this place, I say, wow, God, I thank you. Ah, I don't have to be buying good. Where will I have had the money? There's a song in my native tongue. If you are to buy good, if you are to buy toys, if you are to buy this animal, where will I have gotten the money? But Jesus did it for me for free. Isn't it wonderful, brothers and sisters, that Jesus did it for us for free? So for that reason, we should appreciate him daily. All we have to do is to just to thank him, to say, God, thank you. Thank you for what you have done for me. We cannot thank him enough. If there was mouth all over our body, we cannot thank him enough. Anyway, we are going to stop here today. We are going to continue next week in chapter 30. And when we finish here, we will go to Leviticus. Leviticus is about purity, how to live a clean life. It's actually about domestic living. Esther is about law, about setting up the temple and setting constitutional law for us to live a holy life. I want us to see the Bible chapter by chapter, verse by verse. So when he told us how to live, even when in Leviticus, on how to have a relationship with a woman, when to have a relationship with a woman, when to have a relationship with a woman. If you do all these things, he said, you'll be my special people. I will fight against your enemy. I will be with you. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Brothers and sisters, I go to pray. Time is on our side. I try to make us to finish by 11 o'clock. So every every time, but we are a little few minutes early. If you can start early, those of us that want to join, try to log in exactly 10. So we'll finish exactly 11. I go to pray. Father, I want to bless you for your word. Your word say, I honor those that honor me. Father, we have come to see how you honor us, how you want us to honor you, how you want us to love you, how you want us to obey you, how you want us to respect you, how much provision and sacrifice you are made for, how you want us to give you the best, Holy Father. Any way we have seen against you, in our thoughts, in our action, in our behavior, by what we do or fail to do, we fail to realize the blood of Jesus Christ that have made this sacrifice for us. We say we are sorry. We are sorry, O Lord God of Israel. Forgive us. Have mercy upon us. These brothers and sisters who have dedicated their time to listen to your word, as a pastor, I present them before you. Their family, their businesses, their husbands and their wives. I say, Lord God of Israel, bless them. God, meet their needs. Whatever they lay their hand to do, bless it. Any man or woman is fighting against them or against us because we belong to Christ, you say, I'm your God. I will fight for you. Father, fight for us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Father, we have no power of our own. Some trust in chariots, others trust in horses, some trust in talisman, some trust in their money, some trust in their job, some trust in their education, but we trust in you. You that made the heaven and earth. Father, bless us indeed. Be our God. Fight for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. We cover ourselves. We see how much you, you want to beautify Aaron. Beautify our home. Beautify our children. Beautify our wives. Beautify our husband. Beautify divine grace international ministry. As the word go forth throughout the nations of the earth. Father, let people hear your word and let them give their heart to you. You call me to build a family that will hear your voice and do your will. One family at a time. Father, as this family hear your voice all over the whole world, bless them. As they listen to your word and they practicalize it, bless them, Lord God of Israel. May your blessing be upon us and upon all we do in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. For our sake, Lord, we pray for the peace in the United States of America where we are. Where you give our president wisdom to make the right decision that will bless us as your people. We pray for the Congress. We pray for the state governors. We pray for the mayor of our city. We pray for the city where we live. There will be peace. As our children go to school, let there be peace. Let there be peace. Deliver them and us from the evil one in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Father, bless the divine grace and national ministry. And I, as your servant, I ask that you bless me. Give me more of your anointing as I study your word. Give me more revelation to understand your word, to apply it daily so that your people might be blessed. As Aaron represents your people, 
He said, carry the body of the Father. As I carry the body of these brothers and sisters and present before you, Father, bless them. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you bless us, Lord God of Israel. Jesus. Pray for the church and Jesus Christ on earth. We pray for the pastor, missionary, evangelist, workers of the ministry. Let them be light worldwide. Darkness cannot outshine the light. We rebuke darkness wherever it is present, in our place of work, in our businesses, in our home, in our lives, in life of our children. We rebuke darkness. We say, darkness, you are darkness, you are nothing but darkness. We rebuke you with the blood of Jesus Christ. You say, we push you back. We push back Satan's kingdom. We push back darkness. We advance the light of God in Jesus' name. Amen. I just say thank you for what you have done for us. We are grateful for everything. Take the glory and the honor that is due to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, we'll see you next week. Same time. God bless you, and bye-bye. Amen.